Iran knew about the attack in Jordan or how operationally it was involved? Um, you know, we believe that this was uh, done by an element of what is known as the uh, axis of resistance. Uh, and uh, these are Iranian proxy groups. Uh, and how much Iran knew or didn't know, we, we don't know. But it really doesn't matter because Iran sponsors these groups, it funds these groups, uh, and uh, in some cases it, uh, it trains these groups on uh, advanced conventional weapons. Uh, and so, you know, I, again, I, I think without that facilitation, these kind of, kinds of things don't happen. This is my video update on this Friday afternoon, February the 2nd. Let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with Lloyd Austin. Lloyd Austin is back. The Empire Strikes Back. Dun, 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 dun. Every time I see Lloyd Austin, I, that, that song pops in my head. <laughs> the Darth Vader song. Uh, so Lloyd Austin, he was moving very slowly as he was approaching the podium to give what I think is his first uh, press conference since his operation. But he was moving very, very slowly as he was uh, about to get up on stage and speak to the media. And Lloyd Austin, he talked about what is about to happen in the Middle East. And Lloyd Austin, he said that the United States does not know how operationally involved Iran was in killing the three U.S. troops. But Lloyd Austin said it doesn't really matter. It does not matter. He said that the U.S. believes that, uh, the Pentagon said that the U.S. believes that Iran manufactured the drone. So they're building the case. They're preparing everybody for the strike that's about to come. And, and they're building the case of, of Iranian uh, guilt is what they're doing. Uh, they're not sure how operationally involved Iran was, but it doesn't matter. We do know that this drone was manufactured by Iran. And so the plan is that the United States is going to begin a two-week uh, bombing campaign, a two-week attack on Iranian installations and Iranian-aligned militia in Iraq and Syria, as well as cyber attacks and, and other, other things, sanctions, financial, financial tools. We've got tools, as Ursula likes to say, but uh, that's the plan. Two weeks of uh, American military attacks against Iranian installations and uh, aligned, aligned militia in Iraq and Syria. In Iraq and Syria. Could you imagine if... Sergei Shoigu, the Russian uh, defense minister, decided to, to brief the media on, uh, let's say, on this recent uh, sinking of the Russian warship, the Ivanovets, and he decides to, to speak to the media. And Sergei Shoigu, he gets up on, on stage in front of the podium and he says, uh, Russia, Russia is not certain. Uh, how operationally involved the UK, let's just use this as an example, the UK, how operationally involved uh, the UK was in the sinking of the Ivanovets. But it doesn't matter because we found out that this drone was uh, manufactured or designed by the UK. So this drone was designed by the UK that sunk the Ivanovets. And so Russia is going to engage in a two week, um, two weeks of, uh, of military uh, activity targeting UK aligned mercenaries in Western Ukraine and in pick a country, Poland. Can you imagine if like Shoigu came out with, with that type of statement? Is that not the same as what Lloyd Austin is saying in, in this instance? Maybe, maybe it's not, maybe it is, I don't know. So let's talk about the uh, Ivano Novets. And, and by the way, this, this attack against, uh, 
against these Iranian uh, installations in Iraq and Syria, uh, they could begin any day now. Usually stuff like this happens on, uh, on like a Friday night, like midnight U.S. time or on a Saturday. On, on the weekends, stuff like this usually goes down. So this could happen tonight, late night U.S. time. This could happen tomorrow, uh, Sunday. Usually these types of things uh, take place on, on the weekends and usually very late uh, in the evening. Anyway, just wanted to say that. Let's now talk about the Ivano Novets and the sinking of this Russian uh, warship. The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> this, is, this is the Empire Strikes Back video. So the Ivano Novets was hit by drones and it sunk in the Black Sea. This is the second ship that the Ukraine military has hit, which was at sea. I believe we're talking about 11 ships in total have been hit by the Ukraine uh, military, and nine of those ships were not at sea. They were actually docked and undergoing maintenance and stuff like that. But two ships have been hit at sea. The first one was the Moskva, and that was, that was a big score for the Collective West, hitting the Moskva. And now you have the Ivano Novets, which was hit with uh, drones. And from what I understand, at the time of uh, the sinking, sinking of the Ivano Novets, or right before the sinking of the Ivano Novets, there was a lot of uh, NATO, uh, US, UK, Collective West activity in the area, like surveillance drones and targeting and, and radar and, and stuff, reconnaissance, stuff like that. So uh, the, the Collective West NATO was, was very active, and it looks like they were very deliberate in, in planning this attack at this time in order to sink this ship. And it makes sense because this was, this was perfectly timed. The sinking of the Ivano Novets was ideally timed to coincide with uh, Victoria Newland's trip to Kiev. Uh, it was timed to coincide with the European Union voting on the 50 billion uh, euros in funding for Project Ukraine. And perhaps most importantly, the sinking of the Ivano Novets was timed to coincide, maybe you could say distract away from the, the sacking of Zaluzhny, the CNN article that came out and said that uh, Zaluzhny is absolutely going to be fired by Alensky. So you have all of this stuff going down in, uh, in Kiev. And at the same time, you have NATO working overtime to, to get the right targeting of the Ivano Novets and to sink this uh, Russian warship. This is, this is what they always do. Whenever there is some really, really bad optics for Alensky and for Kiev and for Ukraine, whatever stuff is really going horribly wrong and they need a distraction or they need some good news in order to, to push along some funding or, or whatever, uh, they, they always, NATO always puts together the, the surveillance and the reconnaissance and everything to, to strike at Russia. And they don't always get through, but every now and then they get through. And in this instance, they got through. So this was, this was perfectly timed in order to distract and to take away a lot of the attention from what I believe was the palace intrigue in, uh, in Kiev. So uh, from what I understand, the Ivana Novets is it's a pretty old ship. It's about 35 years old and it's um, an anti, it fires anti-ship missiles. So what's the value of the Ivana Novets in this the special military operation, this ground war, not much. The Moskva was a more important target. That one hurt. This one is, is an L for, for Russia and a W for, for NATO and uh, NATO's proxy, but this is not at the Moskva level. And as far as the special military operation, it doesn't do anything as far as change the trajectory of this conflict in any meaningful way. Here's a tweet from Baron of the Tega. 
It's an L, but yeah, not a game changer. Nothing naval is going to change this war on either side. That's exactly right. This is a war that's being fought on the front lines, on the ground, a war of attrition. This is not a naval war, and while this is going to hurt, it doesn't hurt as bad as the Moskva, and you know Russia's going to to continue to to stick to to the plan that they have in place, which is the the attrition of the Ukraine military. This is not going to knock Russia off course, not at all. But the media they're picking up on this in a big way. BBC, their title is Ukraine hits Russian missile boat Ivanovets in the Black Sea. Ben Hodges, he put out a tweet saying, the UAF are running rings around the Kremlin. Russians seem unable to protect energy infrastructure, airplanes on the ground in Crimea or their ships. We, the West, should stay out of the business of telling Ukraine how to fight. Just give them the tools. So that's from Ben Hodges, creaming in his pants. <laughs> but uh, Ben Hodges, you know, he's... His track record is, is not exactly the, the best track record when it comes to predicting uh, the outcome of, <laughs> of the fighting that's been taking place in Ukraine. He's been wrong on just about everything. I think he has a perfect score as far as being wrong on, on the military activity that has been taking place in, uh, in Ukraine. But, you know, for him, this, is, this was a, a good piece of news for Ben Hodges. But, you know, this... This does signal uh, something very important, which is that warships in general, whether they're Russian, whether they're American, U.S. or U.K., uh, whatever, warships in general are, uh, are easy targets for these drones. Just like the drones are changing the way war is being fought uh, on the ground, these, uh, these naval drones, they're going to change, and they're going to change the way war is fought at sea. So today it's a Russian ship. Tomorrow could be a collective West ship. Even the Daily Mail, they put out an article with the title, British Forces in the Middle East on High Alert for Iranian Attacks as America Plans Retaliation for Killing of Three U.S. Soldiers. Big Lizzie warship set to be deployed to Red Sea. As fears grow, regional war could erupt. Yeah, those big aircraft carriers and the warships that project a lot of power, of which the U.S. has, has the most, and, and the U.K. has their warships in the Red Sea, those can be hit now a lot easier than, than years in the past. So let's now discuss, let's see here. The empire strikes back. Let's discuss the EU approval of the 50 billion euros to Ukraine. So the EU approved the 50 billion euros to Ukraine. <laughs> there you have it. That's it. So let me pull up a BBC article with the title, Ukraine support package worth 50 billion agreed by EU Leaders, Zero Hedge has an article with the title, Ukraine celebrates EU approval of 54 billion aid package after Hungary's Orban caved. We have a deal. European Council President Charles Michel announced on X on Thursday, declaring that all 27 European Union countries have finally agreed to the additional 50 billion euros aid package for Ukraine, which was under threat of Hungarian veto. The unanimous approval Locks in, locks in steadfast long-term predictable funding for Ukraine and further demonstrates the EU is taking leadership and responsibility and support for Ukraine. We know what is at stake, Michelle said. So the, the money that's going to be given to Ukraine is something like, okay, it's 50 billion over four years, but it's something like 30% of it in the form of a donation and 70% in the form of loans loans that you're never going to to get back <laughs> obviously money that you're never going to get back but that's that's the structure of this 50 billion payment over four years and the big story in all of this is that uh, orban uh, caved orban at the end of the day he he gave the okay 
for the 50 billion to be given to Project Ukraine and his demands that there be some sort of mechanism where the EU uh, votes every year with regards to the to the 12.5 billion disbursement to to Ukraine that's that didn't happen so this money is locked in 50 billion over four years Ukraine is going to get that money did uh, did the EU make some concessions to Orban yeah kind of they kind of made some concessions to Orban or at least Orban is saying that he got some concessions before he voted yes for this 50 billion to Ukraine according to zero hedge the european leaders they managed to win over orban with three additions diplomats said there will be an annual report by the european commission on the implementation of the aid package there will be a debate at leaders level on the implementation of the package and if it is needed in two years the european council will ask the commission to propose a review of the new budget according to the latest version of the draft European Council conclusions. EU leaders added a line referring to earlier conclusions from December 2020 to guarantee that the way the rule of law in Hungary is evaluated by the European Commission is done in a fair and objective manner. This is music to Orban's ear as the 2020 text has implications for the 6.3 billion of EU cohesion funds that were frozen for Hungary over the rule of law shortcomings. Okay, so basically what Zero Hedge is reporting is that Orban caved on the promise that the funds that the EU has frozen, Hungary's funds from the, from, uh, the cohesion funds, the 6.3 billion, that the EU is not going to hand this over to, to Ukraine. That's pretty much what, uh, what Orban got out of this. And that the EU, every year or two, they'll, uh, they'll review where the money was spent in Project Ukraine. Let's, okay, whatever, that's BS. But basically, the guarantee that Orban got is that the $6.3 billion, which is your money, the $6.3 billion that we froze, and is your money hungry, we're not going to hand it over to the Alensky regime. That's pretty much what he got out of this. That's it. That is it. So there you have it. My, my guess is that Orban, you know, for him, he probably calculated that uh, this is not the, the right battle for him at the right time. He probably said, you know, Hungary's not prepared for, for the attack that the EU is about to launch on our financial system and our currency. And so he folded. He folded. Pick your battles, I guess. And this wasn't the battle that Orban was ready to pick. And so the EU won the day. The empire strikes back. <laughs> Orban is choosing his battles carefully. Hungary has no ability to, to stop the payments, none of that stuff. They can review them, they can talk about the payments, they can decide uh, if the money was spent properly or not, the 50 billion, if it was spent, uh, spent in the right way or whatever, but there's no way that Hungary can put a stop to this 50 billion. That money is locked in to go to Project Ukraine. Here's a tweet from Zlati71. The conditions for the payment of EU aid to Ukraine, as indicated in the press release of the European Council, the main conditions are support for effective democratic mechanisms, including multi-party multi, multi parliamentary system, the rule of law, guarantees of respect for human rights, including minorities. Ukraine must take measures to ensure that there is no fraud, corruption, and conflict of interest when using these funds. In case of non-compliance, the European Union reserves the right to stop these payments. It's just a bunch of, of bollocks. <laughs> That's all that we're looking at here. Just bollocks. Multi-party system and minority rights and the rule of law. And every so often, Ukraine, uh, the EU will, will review whether Ukraine is, is fulfilling these requirements. And if they want to stop the funds, 
they can stop them, but it's not going to happen. There's no, there's no hungry veto right. That's, that's done. So that is the 50 billion that has been given to the Alensky regime. Alensky's very, very happy. <laughs> Ursula is very, very happy. Michelle is very, very happy. Uh, Donald Tusk, he's very happy and very upset with Orban. He said that the European Union has Orban fatigue. I can't understand, I can't accept this very strange and very egoistic game of Viktor Orban. Donald Tusk, Poland's prime minister, said. Kaya Kalis, very happy Kaya Kalis. Victor definitely wants to be the center of attention every time we are here, but it shouldn't be like this. She's very upset with Orban as well, but she was very happy that the money's going to Project Ukraine. Orban put out a tweet and said, mission accomplished, Hungary's funds will not end up, end up in Ukraine, and we have a control mechanism at the end of the first and second year. Our position on the war in Ukraine remains unchanged. We need a ceasefire and peace talks. Yeah, they have a mechanism in place, but Hungary can't veto it. So there really is no mechanism. And the big, the big concession is that the money that the EU is freezing, which is Hungary's money, it won't go to Alenski. I guess that's a concession. I guess when you think about it, I guess, you know, the 6.3 billion is not going to be handed to Alenski so he can buy some homes. So, okay. I'm trying to see if I have Alensky's tweet handy. Yes, I do. Grateful to Charles Michel and the EU leaders for establishing the 50 billion Ukraine facility for 2024 2027. It is very important that the decision was made by all 27 leaders, which once again proves strong EU unity. Continued EU financial support for Ukraine will strengthen long term economic and financial stability which is no less important than military assistance and sanctions pressure on Russia. So there you have it. That's Olenski's tweet. And all of this is going down. This 50 billion going to Project Ukraine at the same time that you have farmers protests all throughout the European Union. And actually, the, at the very same moment that the EU is voting to give 50 billion euros to Ukraine, a country that's not even part of the EU, uh, the farmers were outside of the European Parliament. And they were protesting outside of the European Parliament and things got, got pretty heated. And uh, the EU had to, had to get police onto the scene and, and push the protesters back and things were, were set on fire. And this was right in front of the European Parliament. An incredible, uh, an incredible scene, huh? As the EU gives 50 billion to Alensky, the farmers are protesting so that they can, they can make a, a living. EU farmers, citizens of the European Union, they're protesting so that they can make a decent living. <laughs> as the EU gives 50 billion to a clown puppet actor who has lost this conflict. Bet you 50 billion would, would help the farmers of Europe a whole lot, wouldn't it? So that is the situation there. Let's do, should we do a clown world? Let's do a clown world and we'll wrap this video up. We'll make this video a short one for today. Ukraine to Australia. We don't want your flying trash. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about this story, but uh, Ukraine has rejected some uh, Australian retired FA-18 Hornets. Ukraine said that these planes are trash. We don't want your trash, Australia. Your flying trash. Not only your trash, your flying trash. We don't want it. A senior Ukrainian Air Force official rejected a donation of Australian fighter bombers, calling them flying trash. The Australian Financial Review reported on Tuesday, Kiev later changed its mind and asked for the planes. Months later, 
but the aircraft had already been scrapped. We don't want your flying trash. Ukraine's response to Australia's donation. All right, that's the video, everybody. TheDuran.Locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, Rockfin, and Twitter X, and go to the Duran shop. 15% off all t-shirts. Take care.